gather together and to have some time of fellowship. God says in his word, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in their midst. You know, um, so it's good to be together and to, to fellowship here. Thanks, Jim and Chris, for opening up your home for us again. Sure appreciate you guys. And uh, being able to gather like this, it's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually we'll be able to get back together somewhere, somehow. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it's good to be prudent about obeying the rules. You know, that I think we set a good example that way. But if it crosses God's line, then we'll do what we need to do to, to be the church and, and keep getting the word out because that's the highest command. He is the ultimate authority. Um, but we obey the authorities because God, you know, again, his word says he, he set them in place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for wisdom's sake, we'll, we'll do what we do uh, to follow the rules during the pandemic or whatever else. But... Um, we don't want to be responsible for, for getting anyone sick. We know this thing's happening, but it's um, being wise in how we do things. So we are, um, we're careful, but we're also, you know, realizing who, who really is in charge. And uh, so that's, that's who we bow down to. And the only one we bow down to is the Lord. So um, just in, in fellowship today, uh, just going to share the word and share some songs together. And so, you want to sit, sing, dance, clap hands? <laughs> I, I really have a, I have a heartfelt need right now. And I would just love for us to start this service by giving absolute thanks and praises. Praise the Lord for His goodness, His kindness, His steadfastness. And just that no matter what is going on in this crazy world right now, pandemics, unrest with people and people being unwise in their choices. Jesus is there. Amen. Jesus is king. Yeah. Jesus is on the throne and he is just waiting to come back for his people. And it might be coming sooner than later. I really am feeling that way. And I could not get through one day or one night without my Lord. Mm. Whenever things start to get crazy on the news or on the computer with people just like back and forth, back and forth, I, I won't even watch it anymore. Um, but it's just like, nope, I'm not going to concentrate on that. I don't care what the news says. Jesus is there and he is in control. Amen. And whatever happens in the States, whatever happens in Canada, with the pandemic, they say it's spreading again and the second wave and the, all that stuff. And it's like, I don't care mm. because my God is real. My God is there mm -hmm. and he is there for all of us. Yep. And the thing that really breaks my heart is the people that still turn away, still turn away from God. And it's like, no, you're not going to find peace in looking at numbers. You're not going to find peace in voting or not voting and counting and all that stuff. It's not there. No. It's empty. And I praise Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you are there and you have us and mm. you have all that will turn to you. Amen. And you are in control. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. And praises to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, mm. so much. I love you, Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for allowing me that time. Absolutely. Well, that's God-directed time. And I love when a plan comes together. <laughs> Scripture, you know, reading <clears throat> I've been doing lately is, is Revelation and kind of, you know, that last chapter, 22, where he says, Behold, I'm coming soon, and I'm, you know, bringing my recompense with me. And, uh, you know, to judge those for, you know, for what we've done. What have we done with this life that he's given us? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. But my actual call to worship is also perfectly fitting with what you just shared from Philippians <clears throat> chapter 4. Uh, where it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. I will say it again. Rejoice. 
Let your reasonableness or your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all under our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So the fact that you would exalt and give God thanks and praise for what he's done and you know make sure he's getting the glory, perfectly fitting. So. I just felt it. I had to Amen. put that I couldn't shut him up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, let's just uh, share a couple songs. Sylvia's already opened us up in prayer, so <laughs> that's fantastic. I didn't mean to butt in. No. Just, you know, like that's what we're all about. Us. That is church. It's not about me or the camera or nothing. It's about worshiping the Lord together here. Amen. Amen. Uh, how great is our God. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his It's not about, you know, trying to be in perfect harmony or in perfect tune or, you know, get the 
the, the order of things right. It's about giving God praise. Mm -hmm. Our worship is to exalt him and to lift up his name and to focus on him and just pour out our heart. And whether the notes are right or the words are right, it's that our heart needs to be right. And so we, we just come with, with our praises and our worship and make sure it is for him. It's, it's not about any of us. It's not about you know how well or anything we, we do things or even what we do or how we do it, whether we're sitting in here or we're sitting in a field, in a church building or in God's sanctuary of, of creation. It's just giving God praise, getting in, and just allowing him to fill us and to fill our time of worship because he, you know, I love the scripture that says he inhabits the praises of his people. You know, so we want to know God's presence and know how he's interacting with us. We praise him because in, in that is literally where he dwells. Mm -hmm. And it's just an amazing thing. So if, if life seems to be just going all amok, worship. You know, if, if we feel lost, get into the word and just get our focus back on him. And it's amazing how that just recenters us and refocuses us. And when we rejoice, you know, on what is right and that's worshiping God mm -hmm. and and that's, I think, what led me to this next song, which is Come As You Are. It's not, you know, this is, this is me. It's all I've got. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just coming, just as I am. Good hymn there, too. I actually could have done that one as well. <laughs> Come out of sadness from wherever
question we often glib over real quickly. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Not the pat answer. No, oh, fine. Well, is fine good enough? You know, or is is fine okay? Is it just is it okay just to be okay? Or should we be great? Or should we be hurting and be willing to actually share that? You know, when someone asks the question, "How are you?" You know, am I suffering? Am I going through some some confusion and some struggle? Or am you know, am I so you know secure and, and, and assured in my faith that you know what? Doesn't matter what's going on. I'm great. You know, God is good. You know, and there's there's something to be excited about and to praise God about in the midst of whatever the world happening in the world. Let the world be the world. You know, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where Jesus said to the one who would follow him, you know, let the dead bury their own dead. Don't worry about the world. You follow me. And there's a difference in that. And people should see that. And we should be willing to share that. You know, so that people don't get all caught up in the yeah, I'm just fine. I'm just cruising, doing okay, but uh, just enjoying life, you know. So let's uh, let's think of that, and that's well, reason for one more song. <laughs> Morning, <laughs> because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior.
Oh, that song always gets me. That's a good one. Um, all three of those were perfect. Oh. You never know. No, it's that, that wonderful, wonderful assurance. Another great hymn. Blessed assurance, mm -hmm. Jesus is mine. Good reminder for everybody nowadays. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, just turn on the news or the internet or anything social media wise, and it's just filled with, Ugh, Yeah. Right? And it's, you know, there, I think, to drag us down and make us feel miserable and needy. And, yeah. you know, it's just, or it, you know, if, if you get lost in that, and it, it's easy to do, and you know, I, you know, we're I'm a bit of a news junkie. You know, we we watch the the late news and kind of want to be informed, but I don't want to let it, you know, drag me down. So they said to pick me up afterward. And, you know, it's you know, we need it. This world needs it. it needs Jesus a whole ton. Anything else? Uh, something some to share before we jump into well, I was just the word? Say yeah. that for Absolutely. us, I, I really feel strongly about this. For us, it's like using a compass when you're in the mm. woods or something. But our north doesn't say north, it says Jesus. Mm. And if we get a little bit off track, just get your focus back on Jesus. And it just, Amen. it's just like take a deep breath and ah, there he is. Yeah. You know, and I do that all the time. Because you just hear all this stuff where you pick up a newspaper, even the Silly Gazette, you know, and, and you see things, you hear things that are just dreadful. Yep. Like right now, two things. A woman killed by her husband in Langford. Mm. And it's like, what? You know, and then another lady that got COVID, she's pregnant in our hospital. She had to have emergency C-section. She doesn't even know her child has been born. And that was the last I heard. Mm. The baby is healthy, um, little boy. Um, and I think he was born a week early because they had to take him yeah. through emergency C-section um, because she's suffering so from COVID. He was born completely healthy, There's no time. sign of COVID. And yet his mother doesn't even know mm. that he's been born. And I don't even know if the family can go up and no, the family probably can't. They go can't up. go visit. No, and I don't even know if they have access to the baby. I I don't know if that was the last we heard, and it was like, oh my gosh, that just you know, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. I don't even know the woman, and I wanted to ball, mm. you know, but it just yeah. you know, focus back on Jesus, and I thought, thank the Lord for Addie and baby Mason, that they were totally fine. They were totally Amen. healthy. Amen. And, you know, everything was good. Yep. You know, we were so blessed, you know, because this poor lady. And the other thing was, they didn't even know how she contacted it because she rarely went out anywhere. And, you know, it's like, where did this come from? Like, it's just so bizarre. Yep. But maybe she chose to stay closer to home because she had, you know, she was pregnant. Mm. And she got it. Yep. You know, she got it somehow. You know, but it's it's just mind-boggling. Yeah, shows how little we are in this world. Yep. And how something so little, like a little bug, can affect yeah. so much. exactly. So I, I think that's why Jesus says, you know, a little leaven affects the whole loaf, right? Mm -hmm. You let a little... Something get into your life, you know. Like he's, he's talking in reference to sin, right? Something, right. something that's sinful. You let a little creep in, and it affects everything. It does. And um, this bug, I think, is maybe you know another thing that's reminding us that we are fragile. Life is fragile in this body, but life itself is eternal, and so we have to have proper focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you ready to keep on going in Luke? Mm. Which Interesting passage, passage today. We're in uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 13 to 24. Have you ever heard the phrase that uh, too much of a good thing isn't necessarily a good thing? Kind of like pizza. You know, I love pizza. Pizza's a, pizza's a good thing. But if I sit down and eat an entire pizza myself, it doesn't feel like a good thing anymore, does it? Mm -mm. Um. A little wine or a little beer might be nice, but too much, and the person loses control. Many things, you know, we could go on and on about all sorts of 
examples. But I want you to think of that thought. Too much of a good thing isn't necessarily a good thing. Um, just suffice to say, good things can become not so good. Great things, on the other hand, are always that. They are great. And they're the things we need to, to focus on. And when we focus on a great thing, when our, 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 our worship, our praise, our life is focused on a great thing and not just, not just good, but great, then we have proper focus, proper worship, proper praise, and a, maybe a proper life. Um, so what is the greatest thing about knowing Christ? It's just that. It's knowing Christ and having that blessed assurance that our names are written in the book of life. Uh, knowing Christ and knowing who we are in Christ is much greater than anything else in our lives, anything that we might be concerned with right now, anything else in the world that, or the world could possibly offer us, or anything in the spiritual realm. Knowing Christ and being known by him, there is nothing greater. And that needs to be our focus. And that's why I... I titled the message today, Rejoicing in the Right Things. Because we can possibly start rejoicing in wrong things. And that's what Jesus is talking to his disciples and to us about today as we look into Luke 13. Um, anyone care to read for us today? The first uh, four verses, 13 to 16. And then I got a few thoughts. Or I can read it. Oh, Luke 10, verse 13. Did I jump a chapter? Thank you. That's why I have my, my proof, my life proof right here. This is my wife. She's wonderful. I'll read it out, sure. So it's woe to you. Now for the matters you wrote about. No, I don't know. We'll have Max read it for us today. Bible out. Oh, silly things. Silly things. <laughs> That's all right, Kristen. No worries. <laughs> all right. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you and you, Capernaum. Will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Think of where this is being said. Jesus is present. He's actually with his disciples. He's physically there with them. God is with his creation. You know, God Almighty, the creator of the universe, who spoke everything with a word, is present with these guys. He is doing the miraculous. People are being healed, raised from the dead, Absolutely amazing things are happening beyond supernatural. And he is fulfilling all scripture that was written about him. And he's about to pay the ultimate price for humanity's sin by dying on the cross in just a matter of a few months from this point. So that anyone who would believe in him would have everlasting life. And yet, here's God with this most amazing message in the most perfect way being rejected by humanity. Here, here it is. Here's life. Here's, here's my message. Here's my son. And people are rejecting him. Turning, him, turning away and saying no. His own brothers and sisters, his own family wouldn't believe in him. Mary and Joseph, I'm pretty sure they were convinced. Mm -hmm. But we're told in scripture that his family did not believe in him until after he ascended. So even during this time, his own siblings rejecting him. The priests and the Pharisees, they didn't want to acknowledge him as being who he was. Messiah arrived, fulfilling scripture. That, that would take all the glory away from them. So they rejected him. Past generations, though, Jesus talks about it. He says, you know, if they were seeing what you're seeing now, they would have. They actually would have repented gotten all um, humble by sitting in sackcloth and ashes and realizing, you know, we've done some stupid <laughs> stuff. God forgive us. If they saw what you guys are witnessing right now, they would have repented. But you? No. You and your cities and your people, you're done because you're rejecting what God has provided. Yet, we know this is part of God's plan, but isn't it sad that people can have the truth right there 
and still reject it? What about our city? What about the West Shore? What about Machosan, Langford, Colwood, Victoria, Canada? What are we doing with the message that, that we've been given? The Holy Word of God, the Gospel, the entire story from beginning to end, and we know the end. What would Jesus have to say to us? Would we would it be way to go or would it just be woke? Woe to you. Is is Canada, is, is our is our own community doing what we need to be or should be doing in fulfilling the Great Commission and the call of God in our, our lives with the truth that we have and we know, the things we, we know are true, the things we know are right. What would Jesus say to us? The world that hears us, when they hear our words, when they hear us speaking, when they see us on social media, when they see us out in the world, at, at our job site, in our families, in our our communing with, with the world around us, be it in a shopping store or the way we drive or, or anything else, do they, do they see and hear Jesus? Do they hear and see the gospel? Because that's what we're to do, is to live a life that reflects all of that so that basically the ball is now in their court whether they want to accept or reject it. I, I don't want to be responsible for someone not knowing Christ because I didn't exemplify him in my life. I think that would be a, a judgment against me saying, you what you had all this and you didn't do it? It's just like a, we call the sin of omission, right? The things we didn't do, even though we knew what we should do. And that's what I think he's saying to, to the disciples and these poor cities who are you know, openly rejecting him. He's saying that to us. Don't, don't miss what, what's available right now. You know, you've got this truth. You've got this world that is so in need of the truth. Go and share it. Go and live it. Speak it. Live it out so that people can see and know me through the way you live your life. So that they can't say, oh, I, I never knew. I never, I never saw your church doing nothing. Let's go, let's go be the church that, that's out there living this word. He continues, verse 17. The 72 now returned. Those that we talked about last week, the ones he sent out to, to go ahead of him. They came back. So they, they've gone to all the places Jesus was about to go. And they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Now, I don't know if there's an excla exclamation point in the original language, but there's, there's a lot of emphasis here. The demons had to listen to us. They had to obey us. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Good reassurance. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, he rejoiced. Jesus did. He rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and he said... I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one who so no one who knows, sorry, lose my word, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Anyone ever asked you this question before? If you had a, or you could have any superpower, what would it be? Somebody just asked me that at work. The really? Day. That's hilarious. <laughs> What'd you say? Um, I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I thought, I was like, I don't know. And then, maybe <laughs> super speed. Super speed. Because I feel like I never get everything done. I'm like, if I could just have super speed. Even for just like, you know, 
half an hour in the morning just to get caught up a little bit. Like, maybe not all the time, because I feel like at the same time, God's trying to teach me to, like, slow down and rest. And so maybe just, you know, just a little window of it every day. I feel like I'm always trying to catch up. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. Get her done. Anyone else? Superpower. What would you have? Just being somewhere you wanted to be, like, hey. Okay. Yep. Just, oh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I Why, Texas. Else. Somewhere warm. <laughs> oh, yes, the transporter. Beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, right. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. A parking spot. Oh, oh. There's always a parking spot. That'd be a superpower. <laughs> no, there's all, all sorts of possible answers there, right? You know, things that we can do that would be just amazing. You know, the absolute... Um, uncanny and, and be able to do that uh, invisibility it was, was one i was thinking of too just to be invisible so that you know no one could could bug me and i could just kind of watch what everyone else is doing and, you know, just to be invisible the, the, the final sort of thing just say so what do people really do what do they really say about me i, I don't know <laughs> 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 you got it. Oh, <laughs> what about spiritual gifts what, what would we think about there things like Casting out demons. That, that's kind of supernatural. That's a superpower, wouldn't it be? Or, you know, power of healing. You know, or speaking in another language so someone could understand exactly the gospel. Didn't matter. There was no language barrier between them. You know, I know people who you know, say they can speak five, seven, or more languages. I, I'm barely getting through English. <laughs> you know, so, you know, just having that, that ability. Do we pray for these to be part of our life? These are good things, maybe even great things. But nothing really to get too excited about. Because that's, that's potentially a dangerous thing in, in, in being a Christian. Now, let me, I have to clarify that, though. Right? I don't want to say that spiritual gifts are bad. Don't understand that at all. It's not what I'm saying. New believers, longtime followers of Christ... Even ministers, priests, pastors, evangelists can get caught up in the whirlwind, the, the showiness of spiritual gifts, these so-called superpowers. And they get locked in on these things to the point where those things become the focus of their ministry, their life, their worship. That becomes the attraction towards coming to a a church group or, or being part of something that hey these great things are going on here let's let's go after these things look what's happening over here look what's happening over there and we chase after these things which are just gifts now they're great seeing healings is great but having a, a giant ministry that's you know so focused on healings that maybe become even artificial for the sake of showing this because you know maybe the spirit's been removed so let's just have some people do this and fake it which has happened we all know the stories about these, you know, fake, <coughs> fake healers. So that, that attraction becomes the focus and God's not even in it. That's no longer a good thing, is it? It's, it's actually become a bad thing. It's become a, a pro, an improper focus. The great thing that we should be focused on is salvation through Christ and Christ alone, isn't it? Having that assurance that I have eternity with Christ, and anyone who believes in him can have that same blessed assurance. So as the disciples said, they were getting really excited. Why? Because the demons were subject to them. They could cast out demons and tell them to, to get out and leave, and they would. And they rejoiced in that. We have this power. We tell the demons to go, and they go. Look at us. Mm -hmm. I'm implying a little bit here, but can you see why Jesus addresses it the way he does? He says, don't rejoice in that. that that's good and that's great. You know, these people are being free from demons. Absolutely, but don't focus on that. Rejoice rightly. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's what you have to celebrate because he's about to do this work that goes beyond anything supernatural that we might see or hear. This is now the greatest thing that's ever going to happen is Jesus' sacrifice. He says, that's what you need to focus on. Okay. 
So Jesus then gives this amazing little little statement that you know sometimes gets gets skipped over. His, his reply to them, you know, saying, "Oh, look, the demons are subject to us." Well, that's fine. You want to know who's subject to me? Says Jesus, Satan. I saw him fall out of heaven like lightning. I commanded him to go. In other words, it's not, not just his little minions, but Satan himself. You want to talk about authority? You want to talk about power? Let me tell you about my power, says Jesus. Satan, who rebelled in heaven, him and his angels, they were kicked out like that because God has the ultimate authority. You want to talk about power? He says, I've got it all. And that's what you need to rejoice in. That you know, you, They're subject to you, but you're subject to me. Demons are subject. Everything is subject to me. There is no higher authority. There's no higher power in all the universe than God, than Christ. So he's got power over demons. He's got power over Satan. He's got power over pandemics. He's got power over our worries and our, our fears and our anxieties and our stresses. All these things. He's in control. He's in control of everything. Nothing goes beyond his sight. Nothing goes beyond his knowledge. There's nothing we can do that he's not aware of. There's no thought we can have, no action we can do that he's not fully aware of. He knows the number of hairs on your head, the way your DNA is all stitched together, so he made you exactly the way you are. He knows your, your heart, your soul. He knows everything about you, and he loves you. And we get caught up in little things like, oh, look at this, this latest thing here or there, and we, we chase after these little tiny things. Look look at this, this wealth. Look at this, this fame. Look at this social media. Look at this whatever that we become focused on, and we start rejoicing in something small. It, it never ceases to amaze me, you know, like a sporting event. You know, a hockey team puts a piece of rubber into a net that's four by six feet, and the crowd goes nuts, and they give them a trophy, and here you go, and the crowd goes wild and insane, versus the creator of the universe giving his life, shedding his blood, being buried for the sake of my sin, and rising from the dead, and giving me life eternal, and we're like, eh, it doesn't really cut it for me today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm so interested. We're rejoicing in the wrong things. Mm -hmm. We need to rejoice in the right things. What we are to rejoice over is not that we've been given these or any spiritual gifts. As good as all those might be, that's not to be our focus. Instead, our rejoicing needs to be over having our name written in a particular book. Not Facebook. The Lamb's Book of Life. Knowing that we have eternal life with Christ, that is the greatest thing. That is something to rejoice over, that God would love me so much. Again, going back to last week's verse that's just been hitting me and hitting me, John 3, 16 and 17. God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever believes shouldn't perish but should have everlasting life. There's nothing greater, and I need to focus on that. Remember that. Whenever I'm going through anything, he did that for me. He loves me, and I might suffer in this body, you know, I was, I was whining again this week because my bursitis is blowing up in my knee again and while my knee's working and it hurts, it's like, yeah, but one day that's going to be gone and there's going to be no more suffering, no more pain because this body's done and I get to be with him, you know, forever in a body without bursitis or this or that or the other thing, right? You know, it's just going to be wonderful. We get caught up in the emotion. We get caught up in the what's in it for me, the, the program-focused, me-focused, my truth kind of world that we live in that draws us away from the central focus, which has to be God in everything. He's got my first thought. He's got my daily thoughts. He's got my last thought. He's got it all. I just, so why, why would I be anxious? Why would I fear if I know God? We try and make things polished and professional, slick and high society. We focus on the performance and the audience rather than the only thing that matters. And that is, do people know Jesus? And to that, I'm speaking to the church, saying that, you know, if we get caught up in how we do things and how good things look and how wonderful it all is, and don't worry about the basics of it, like interaction, fellowship, let's, let's share life, you know. I think that's why the early church had it so good, because they did meet regularly. They got together in homes, and that's why I love this, <laughs> you know, that we can just be a little group of folks in a home just talking about Jesus, talking about the Word. It's so good. It is so free. good. And free. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. And so, you know, why, why get all hung up on all the other stuff when all it is is stuff? Right? Let's, let's focus on, on the 
thing we need to focus on, and that is Christ. You know, it's, you know, they, they got it right, you know, only Christ, only his word, only to him goes the glory. You know, and if, if we would just simplify it, we'd have it so much better. And that's why Jesus praised God. He says, you know, you've hidden this thing, this, this wonderful, simple truth from the, the wise and the understanding, those who think they know it all. They know nothing. You've made this clear too, little children. Little kids can get it. That's why I have no problem in, in asking a young child, do you believe in Jesus? Do you understand the gospel? you want to be baptized? Awesome. You're a believer. That's all it takes. We overcomplicate things. We, we do classes and courses and stuff and make sure you're just, you're just right before we'll say oh, we'll dunk you or we'll accept you uh, into membership or into fellowship. How dare we? It's just about knowing Jesus and knowing who he is. We are to rejoice. Absolutely. You know, we, we of all people have something to rejoice over. You know, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of, you know, world crises and things going topsy-turvy all over the place, Christians should be the most rejoicing people on the planet, happy all the time. Really? Why? Because we have eternity with Christ. You know, none of this matters. It really doesn't. And we have to let go of all these things and realize, yeah, we, we go through life, and yeah, we're going to suffer a little while, but we have eternity. That needs to be our focus. And if, if we'll allow that to happen, you know what? We suddenly have the right perspective, and I say, okay, bring it on. Whatever's next is bring it on. I know Jesus is with me. I know God's not going to forsake me, so I can get through this. He's with me. He's my strength. He's my, he's my solid rock. It's not, it's not anything in this life. All that stuff can crumble right away. You know, this, we, this pandemic is one thing. Wait till, you know, natural disasters start happening to us here. What's going to happen in this area, you know, when and if the, a big earthquake does happen? Not to strike fear in us, but, you know, things will happen. Life will happen. This world is going to break down. We know that. Are we going to, is that going to shatter our faith? I hope not. We need to be the ones, the church to be the ones that people are turning to say, what is the church doing in the midst of all this panic? What's the church doing when things fall apart? What is the church doing? What are God's people doing? How are they helping each other and helping others around them in order to proclaim and show the love of God as he demonstrated to all of us and that while we were still sinners, he died for us. That needs to be the example we're setting for anyone else so that people can see Christ and know Christ, to hear his words and to see his actions in us. So our testimony. Our testimony of faith might be just the thing someone needs to hear in the midst of all this craziness of this world to bring them out of their deep blue funk and say, you know what, there is some hope. Our actions, the way we live our lives and conduct ourselves in the world might just be what someone needs to see to say, you know what, those believers in Christ, they've got something and I want that. It's, it's not the show, it's the evidence of a life transformed. And if they see that in us, that's going to be the attraction. It's not about the flash and the lights and the smoke show and the, the, the wonderfulness of anything. It's simply Jesus. That's who we need to proclaim. A five-year-old can understand that. Why, why do we make it so, so hard for people to come into the kingdom? We need to just say, you know what? God made you. God loves you so much so that he paid the penalty for your sin, which has separated us from him. And all he's asking is for you to believe in him and you know, live your life for him. You understand that? Isn't that that's simple enough? Because that's all it takes. The rest and the understanding, that, that comes. But salvation comes through hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so let's be proclaiming that as, as we go through life and rejoice in the right thing, the greatest thing. And that is Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the, the simple reminder that, Lord, we need to just surrender to you and, and give our life and our heart, our thoughts and everything just over to you and proclaim you are the Lord. I'm the follower. You're the one who gave your life so that I could have life. Thank you. Bless your name. Praise you, Jesus, that we can have this wonderful assurance of knowing that our names are written in heaven. It's only because of Christ. It's nothing that we've done. It's that he's done it all. And all you ask of any of us is to believe and to have faith and trust you. God, you are trustworthy. You are faithful. You are the truth. 
And I pray, God, that as we go through life, as we go through these days that where the news is, is such a downer and, and pressures are so hard, God, that we would be consistently praising your name and giving you glory and looking forward to the day when you do come again, because we know that day is coming. Whether it be soon or far off, we don't know, but we know it's coming. And we will live our lives as if it could be today. We will not live in fear. We will live in victory. We will not live in anxiety, but we will live in peace. It's that wonderful peace of God that goes beyond all the understanding, all the things of this world. And it reminds us that there is a God in heaven who loves every single one of us. And so help us to be at peace with that and just to accept that you, you do. You love us. We don't have to prove it. You've already done so. And so God, we thank you. I pray that your word would just be proclaimed in and through our lives, that people would see Christ in us, in the way we speak, in the way we act, so that you get all the glory and people can see Jesus in us and, and say that you know in their hearts they've got to make a decision to accept or reject. And I pray they accept it. May we be willing to do whatever it takes, God, in order to proclaim your word to this fallen world until the day you come or until the day you take us home. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.